Skywatch Media News for the first week of November 2021. It appears as if the lonely years of solar minimum have come to an end. A colossal coronal mass ejection slammed into the Earth's magnetic field on November the 3rd, triggering an intense G3 geomagnetic storm that painted the skies red. The U.S. Space Weather Prediction Center monitored a series of outbursts from the sun, which began on November the 1st. Throughout the week, multiple CMEs were produced, with a cannibal CME striking our planet on Thursday, November the 4th, traveling at a speed of 583 kilometers per second. Prior to its arrival, the NOAA issued a stern warning, stating that the incoming CME could affect daily life, such as irregularities in the electric power grid, GPS malfunctions, as well as orientation issues aboard the International Space Station and radio signal interference to and from the Earth. A cannibal CME is one that eats its own kind. On November the 2nd, Sunspot AR-2891 hurled a fast CME towards Earth. As it approached our planet, the cannibal CME overtook and swallowed at least one other CME before the pair crashed into the Earth at 8 p.m. Universal Time on November the 3rd. The CMEs from this eruption produced a magnetic flux containing tangled fields and compressed plasma that sparked super auroras on Earth. The northern lights dipped into the Midwestern U.S. from Minnesota as far south as Oklahoma, cascading over the horizon and turning the skies a deep red and green hue. The red skies are intriguing in that it is a fairly rare phenomenon for plasma particles to strike Earth at the mid-latitudes, in which the light spreads nearly as far south as the city of Los Angeles. As of November the 6th, the Earth's magnetic field is calming down as the planet comes out of a 20-hour-long strong G3 geomagnetic storm. NASA has yet to notify the media of any damage assessment on Earth as a result of the cannibal eruption from the Sun. This is the second significant eruption from the Sun in the past week, the latest following a geomagnetic storm that struck Earth in late October 
after the sun hurled a dangerous X1 flare in our direction. When we reflect on the Earth's violent geological past, we are reminded of a time unlike any other in human history. It was early in the year 536, when the skies over Eastern Europe and throughout Asia blackened, like a dark curtain drawn across the sun. Although it gave forth its light, there was no brightness. It seemed as if the sun was in an eternal eclipse. For all those living across Europe and Asia in 536, life was unbearable. But the decade that followed would be dreadful. Millions of people across the world's most populated countries were losing nearly every crop that they were relying on for the harvest. It was a harsh reality for so many people that were living in dark times, as some historians have said, the very worst time to be alive. It all began with a rapid and drastic change in the Earth's climate. In the spring of 536, a volcanic eruption became the catalyst for disaster, with ensuing catastrophic eruptions taking place in the years 540 and 547. These eruptions combined produced turmoil and despair among Europeans that would last for the next decade. Aerosols from the big volcanic eruptions blocked solar radiation, dropping the heating of the Earth's surface by as much as one and a half to two and a half degrees Celsius across Eurasia. The skies remained dim for up to 18 months, triggering the dark year of turmoil in 536. Weather patterns were severely affected by the darkened skies leading to summer snowfall in China and the lowest temperature levels in more than 2,300 years. The result was several years of failed harvest and subsequent famines, which caused mass migrations and turbulence across Eurasia. In the wake of the climate-altering volcanic eruptions and the darkened year of 536, the situation was ripe for a plague to wreak havoc. As the food shortages increased, the population was weakened, making them more susceptible to the pathogen. A plague pandemic on top of an, an abrupt cooling certainly made for difficult times. During this period of time in the 6th century, an Icelandic eruption of the Katla volcano emitted a thick ash cloud that spread across the northern hemisphere, emitting large quantities of sulfate into the atmosphere. Another eruption 100 times stronger than the 1980 Mount St. Helens explosion took place in central El Salvador from the Elapango volcano. Today, a lake the size of 28 square miles sits in the volcanic caldera left behind. This was the largest eruption in Central America that humans had ever witnessed. But the importance of the event is much greater, both how the Mayans overcame it and how it impacted the events of the year 536. These two cataclysmic eruptions combined are believed to have triggered the decade-long period of disease, famine, and tragedy across Eurasia. So when we look back on that bleak period in our geological history, it may seem hard to comprehend or to believe, given the past 100 years of wars and devastating pandemics. The changes that took place back then were drastic and they happened in the blink of an eye. The ancient witnesses were onto something in those times. They were not being hysterical or imagining the end of the world. No, what was happening was real, and they were experiencing it. Stay safe, everyone. Thanks for watching, and always keep looking to the sky.